Thank you so much for joining us from all around the, the country and the globe. We appreciate you uh, coming to join us here tonight and learn more about Villanova. My name is Alicia dunphy Culp, and I'm the Senior Director of the First Year Experience here in Student Life. I'm very excited to share this uh, presentation with you. It's one of our first opportunities to tell you that we are already and have been already for months preparing for your arrival as a new student in the class of 2028. So um, although this is uh, you know, an exciting time for you, it's, it's also an exciting time for us. We're thrilled to have um, our new families and new students join us uh, for info sessions like this um, in person if you can, and certainly in August um, if you decide to join us here on campus. So tonight's presentation um, will include information from myself as well as our panelists, which we'll get to in a few minutes. They're upperclassmen students who are here to share a little bit about their experience. Um, we've asked them to join us and we've kind of curated some of the questions you've already sent in. And so either my presentation and or the students answering the question, hopefully will leave you satisfied tonight with more information um, about the, the things that you were interested in. There were a couple of um, questions I'm sure that will come up and we invite you to, to join us with some questions. We may not be able to get to everything tonight, um, but my last slide is our contact information. So happy to continue the conversation if there's something specific you needed more information on. So first, just to start us off, I wanna share some upcoming dates. This is the slide that you parents out there will wanna take a uh, picture of uh, with your phone. Um, so uh, this is a lot of information and we're gonna go over it quickly, but hopefully thoroughly. So, um, you know, we know that um, the first on your mind can, is often housing and what that looks like here at Villanova. Um, our Office of Residence Life is still in the process of curating all the details for the class of 28, but I can share that our early decision one students, those who are accepted in early decision one, will have access to our housing application in early April. All other applicants who are accepted and deposited will have access in early May. So it is coming around the corner. Um, it's mid-March already uh, and we, we blinked and uh, it is already spring. So we are happy to have um, our students filling out that housing application, but there's a couple of things that we just wanna share before we kind of get to you know, the next exciting thing. That's one of the first things that you will do um, after depositing at Villanova. So it, it is chronologically first, but there are probably a, a lot of things that are going into that decision. So first of all, just sharing that we have many, for our first and second year students, many are traditional style rooms, which means two people in a room and a bathroom down the hall. So that is, is our traditional style. Our first year students live on South and main campus and on West campus. So there's three campuses all entitled in, in Croce here in Villanova, and we are in all of them. So it, it's nice to have kind of a cross-reference of students in different places. Um, just so you know, yes, those are the dates, early April and early May uh, for the housing contract to open. The roommate selection process is a little bit different this year. So I wanna share in case you've had other um, friends or family members that have been here at Villanova. Um, we will be opening the roommate selection process a little bit later. So it will be, you know, early April and early May, but it will be more like mid to late May that you will be able to tell Villanova who your roommate, if you have a roommate selection process that you've been going through and someone that you have identified that you want to live with and that they've identified that they want to live with you too. Needs to be a cross match there. So that process is opening a little bit later. Because if you are an early decision one applicant and you go in on April 4th and you fill out your contract and look for a roommate in our system, there will only be a small pool of people. So we're hoping that by mid-May, mid all of our applicants, if most of our applicants will be in this pool um, and you'll be able to select a roommate from a much larger pool someone who has your lifestyle, someone who is up late or early, um, someone who uh, you know might wanna study in the room versus studying in the library, all of those kinds of choices, someone who's messy, someone who's neat, those types of choices. And we wanna give the best possible roommate match. Um, so many of our students will, uh, what we say is go random, which is so I have no roommate selection. And there's a large percentage of, of students who do that. But for those who are looking for a match, that will not open in our system until after the housing contract is due. I would suggest you do everything else in a housing application and sign your housing application. 
you can add a roommate back in. So don't worry about you know signing it and having it be done, but then wanting to add someone in. You won't even have that option until later in the process. So you wanna make sure that you sign and complete everything in the housing contract that you can um, so that you can then, if you have a roommate, move forward in that process. If you do not have a roommate, you don't need to do anything else or tell us that you do not have a roommate. We will just presume that you will be going into the process and be matched with someone on our end rather than yours. Many students choose this option, uh, not necessarily by default, but they prefer to have that be a random match and have it be something that is connected through a variety of, of factors and not someone that they meet on social media and just have that snapshot to really take a, a gander at. It, it seems like it wants to be more intentional um, with the lifestyle choices and that bigger pool will allow that to happen. Um, so our housing, um, will go through that process as far as it's an online process, you will fill out a lot of information. And then um, that larger pool of uh, roommate applicants will actually open up in mid to late May. And then you will have an opportunity to search for people. Um, we will get into Communitas in a second. That is our living learning community for first year students here on campus. And in Communitas, that is part of our housing application. So we have a few slides later in our presentation that will describe the entire living learning community situation. But it is something that you select in your housing contract because that's part of the situation um, when you apply for that. Your roommate can be, uh, if, if you choose to have a roommate and they are also in Communitas and you are in Communitas, terrific. Does not have to be the same theme. There's 10 themes. So could be any of those themes. If you have a roommate that you absolutely want to live with and they are not in Communitas and you are, you may still get into the program and you may still live in that housing, but we're not sure yet. We would prioritize people who both are interested in Communitas before we pick someone that has one person interested in Communitas versus one not. Um, if you do not have a roommate and you want Communitas, that is an easy in for us as well. We will match you up with someone in a theme. One of the 10 doesn't have to be the one you're in and we'll make sure that you, you have the best shot to get in. Communitas is one of those programs where um, you know, we get a lot of interest in and it's important that we have all the information about roommates and your theme interest in advance. That's why we ask for it during the housing selection process. Um, so that is something that, that will come forward uh, more in our presentation, but wanted to share that roommate situation with a layer of communitas, make sure that you, you understand that. As we move forward into our summer communications, this is an exciting time in our office of first year experience. Um, we are very busy this summer and a lot of the time we are communicating with you. So you can expect a few things from our office. Um, we will be, uh, sharing out on a weekly basis, what we call VU 101. So that is a weekly newsletter that is generated to both parents and students. Um, that will happen, as we mentioned, once a week, but will contain information that you need at that time. We try to limit it to three, maybe four topics each time. So it's not a terribly long newsletter to read. And it tells you exactly what you need to do before the deadline in the following week. Things like selecting your wildcard photo, very important uh, for the Villanovan to have their best photo on their ID card that they use so often. Um, so that deadline is in early July. We're gonna tell you about it in late June. So we wanna make sure that all of our students are meeting the deadlines, um, but we don't wanna overwhelm you with information. So we will tell you things as, as needed. You're welcome to reach out to us. We hope that the summer communication is a two-way street, uh, but we do wanna say that it is helpful to make sure that you understand that we will be sharing information with you, a lot of information, but trying not to overwhelm you. Uh, for the families out there, we will be uh, sharing our family resource guide, which will be coming from the Office of Parent and Family Relations. That will be another touch point that you will have in the early summer. It's a wonderful guidebook uh, that will be helpful as you learn all the vocabulary we have here at Villanova, all the acronyms, as well as who to contact for what, and a general overview of student life and beyond. So we wanna make sure that you're feeling comfortable with our campus before you even step foot on it. So that will also answer a lot of your questions. I will say that the most important aspect of summer communications is not the weekly email that we will be sending you. It's not a resource guide. It is you checking your Villanova email. That is something that when you deposit and roll with us, it gets generated in the next couple of days and that will be how we communicate with you throughout the summer. 
It is so important for you to, you know, um, have the information, check it frequently at least once a week, um, more as you get closer to August. It feels like we share a lot of information and it is not overwhelming if you take it step by step. But if you check on August 8th and realize that there's a lot of things in your inbox um, that were maybe due in July, we want to make sure to avoid that. So we will be communicating with you. You will be communicating with us. But that Villanova email is so important. You're not used to our system. You're not used to checking that. It's not part of, it's not probably not on your phone, not part of your normal daily routine. Make it part of your routine and you will make your life a lot easier. So make sure that you have all those communications and um, you know all your important Villanova information saved somewhere readily accessible so that you can communicate with us and we can communicate with you. I will say also on the communications front, I would encourage everyone, parents, uh, families, new students, to consider your source when uh, looking for information. We have a lot of wonderful outlets out there, a lot of social media presence that um, has is, is excited to be a part, have you be a part of the Villanova community. And they share a lot of great information. But when it comes to things like, what is the move-in day? When is orientation? What do they do during orientation? Where should I go? I would suggest you come to us, go directly to the source. Um, we are happy to answer questions. Our website is pretty thorough as well. If you're searching for something late at night and, and don't wanna wait till the morning to give us a call. Um, but sometimes even well-meaning posts on social media uh, give the wrong information. So I wanna make sure you have the right information. So when, you know, it might be great to hear some suggestions of places uh, in the area uh, restaurants to eat at, for example, but our family, parent and family relations office also has that information. We have a visit tab. It's nice to have us there. And I understand you might, you know, have more friends that are offering suggestions, but when it comes to things that are important, like when you have to be here, um, what is available to you when you're here, please make sure if it's important to you, it's important to us. And we want to make sure you have that right information. And sometimes even just one year ago, things have changed, schedules change. Um, so it does happen um, pretty quickly around here. And so I just wanna make sure that you have the most up-to-date information. When talking about move-in day, uh, speaking of things that I wanna make sure we have correct, um, Wednesday, August 21st will be our move-in day. That is the day that all first year students will be welcome onto campus there to move into their residence hall. There is a process for that. And it's something we explain in those VU 101 weekly emails. Um, and we'll be communicating with you a lot in your Villanova email. You will get um, an opportunity to sign up for a time during move-in. Um, so pretty much the entire day on Wednesday, we have different slots for different areas. Part of it helps us um, keep some of the hallways congested so that not everyone on one floor of one building picks the same time. Um, so wanting to make sure we spread that out a bit as well as giving people who are traveling from further away the opportunity to pick a time that fits with their travel um, and, and maybe not assigned a, a slot that won't work for them. So wanting to make sure that move-in day runs smoothly, we have a lot of amazing helping hands um, that are there to direct you, to answer your questions, and also physically help. But we do encourage you to you know label everything. Uh, we make sure you have our mailing address for each individual student so that it can get to your designated area. Um, so all of that comes in that weekly newsletter. But no, especially for those of you who are, are um, from further away, know that we are planning for your arrival and that you have the ability to mail packages as well as you know, um, pick your time slot. That can sometimes be helpful for families as they plan. Um, following move-in day, that entire day is dedicated uh, to moving in to a residence hall in August in Pennsylvania, which can be very warm. Um, so I would suggest everyone, uh, you know, dress appropriately, but also consider the idea that you will take the day, have the day. We don't do much programming. We do something that night. Um, for the students to, to socialize and be together. But we want everyone to understand that that whole day is dedicated to move in. So maybe not if, but when you forget something, uh, we will direct you to the nearest target uh, to find what you need or find what you forgot at home um, and make sure that we are moving forward with that, um, the day and, and it goes smoothly. So it, it is quite a long day. There isn't a rush to be done by two o'clock. There isn't a program to be at at 4 p.m. It's very relaxed on our end, but a busy, hot, crazy day. So be prepared for that. 
Um, the following day is a very exciting day for us in orientation. Um, it is opening day and family orientation. So on Thursday, August 22nd, we have a full day of programming and we do suggest if you are not terribly local, we, we do suggest and, and hope that you can stay overnight um, that Wednesday into Thursday. Thursday morning, there's a resource fair, some information sessions, very helpful things for families to experience Villanova um, and get more information um, than perhaps you, you wanted on one particular topic. So you can um, have, visit that table at the resource fair and now dig into the academic major or the resource on campus um, or different information about a different department that you were hoping to get um, some details on. So making sure that, you know, you're Opening day um, is the morning is a little bit relaxed. It's that fair for, you know, a few hours in the morning, some info sessions. Students have the opportunity to kind of get that room set up again, make sure it's all set. And then, um, you know, it's, it's an easy time for uh, everyone to ease into the orientation process. At one o'clock that day, we will start with the university welcome, which officially kicks off our program. Um, we'll hear from our president, Father Peter Donahue, um, our vice president of student life um, and, and our student chairperson who will share a variety of, of helpful suggestions as you get to this next transition. It's very, it's a beautiful welcome to Villanova experience. It's something not to be missed as well as the next parts of the day, which are parents will be meeting with uh, the academic deans of their students' college, and the new students will be meeting with their orientation counselor, and then we flip that. So we go to the university welcome, there's a chance to meet the academic uh, deans and hear from them, then each of you will meet with the orientation counselor separately. We find that it's helpful for the students to meet with the orientation counselor, know the name and the face of the person that they've been connecting with and will be spending the next four days with, but we also find that it's helpful for our families to see that person and get to know them as well and ask any questions of them as an upperclassman um, about their Villanova experience. We all come together for mass uh, on the campus green, which is a beautiful experience. Um, it's one of the only times that classes gather together before graduation. So it's a special time and it is not, uh, not something to be missed. Um, it is an experience parents and family members talk about throughout their four years. Um, after that, we celebrate with a family picnic, and then we put in our schedule that families depart. We put that in there at about 6.45 that evening. So in that general time frame, we will ask families and friends to depart. Um, we put it in our schedule so that everyone knows when it's coming. Um, whether you're a student or a parent, it is important that you know when that will happen. We'll give some time for that and to say goodbyes, and then our program continues. So the students will continue with something right up the next at 7.15, 7, 7.15, they will have a place to be, have that OC to meet, have a group experience and, and have a class experience that evening. Um, not an academic class, a class of 2028, sorry. Don't wanna scare anyone off. Um, so the beginning of that orientation will kick off on that Thursday, the 22nd. It'll be really special for families, um, a wonderful experience and introduction to the Villanova community that day. And then that evening, our students will continue with the orientation program through Sunday. So it is a four day experience. It's something that is well organized and the schedule meets a lot of the needs of students from an academic perspective, addressing anxieties and concerns, as well as getting them to be comfortable on our campus. So it takes, you know, four days to do that, as well as, you know, an opportunity for them to really feel like they are part of that small group and a part of the large, larger class. So it's a nice opportunity for everyone there. Um, then we will kind of hit the ground running with our academic uh, semester. Students will go to classes on Monday. So after they leave us, uh, the rest of their academic experience begins. And then I wanted to throw in the family weekend date because I know that that is important for uh, many of our um, uh, families knowing, wanting to know when to either come back to campus or when they can expect um, to be traveling back if they can um, and connect with their son or daughter. Um, the first few weeks of that school year between orientation and family weekend, um, it, we're exploring those social experiences, they're understanding the academic expectations, they're getting involved in different things. So those first few weeks can be, you know, just a continual, uh, you know, week after week of new experiences. And for some that can be exciting. And, you know, they find the club that they're interested in, they find um, the organization that they did in high school, they find that version here at our involvement fair, 
which is held that first Friday um, after classes start. So it's a really exciting time to be on campus because there's just a renewal of sorts uh, with a new 25% of our student body uh, with the freshman class. We're excited to have everyone here and our upperclassmen are very welcoming um, and want to get their own organizations up and started. So it's great to have a new infusing um, spirit here on campus. Um, transitioning a little into our communitas, as I mentioned before, um, some of you may have received this postcard. It doesn't look exactly like this. This is a, a version of it with um, some different components, but this postcard that we have uh, selected and, and will share with everyone and has, has been mailed out um, is ex explains communitas in a very general way. And we invite you to visit us on the website for more details and a few video components for our students and families to understand it a little more. Um, but I did wanna talk more about communitas. It is part of that housing agreement. And I think it's an important aspect of the first year experience in general. But I, I want to start with this uh, postcard photograph in case that's familiar um, and you have visited us before. So how communitas works is that um, about a third of our new students are involved in communitas. They self-select in on that housing application. They um, uh, we often have uh, a lot of students that are interested in a variety of themes. So we ask for your first choice preference as well as your second choice. There are 10 themes, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and this uh, Venn diagram of sorts is, is helpful in understanding a little bit of how Communitas works. So we do have 10 themes and we ask for your first and second choice. That's the green circle there. Um, those, you would pick one of them, you'd be selected into it. It is great to have that experience. It's weekly experience. It is one credit that gets added to your academic schedule. Um, it is a graded class, but it is something that is um, not overwhelming, not too much on your plate. And it often connects to a topic that you're already interested in. And the homework assignments are more like reflections, um, journal entries, come to something on campus and, and you know tell me about it, tell me three takeaways, those kinds of assignments. So it is not, a lot of uh, homework in addition to what you may already be uh, having on your plate. It's also, there, there's no book. It's very much an experiential course. So it is something that will not add much to your time management um, if you're worried about your schedule. Um, so it is a theme section. And again, those some of those themes are things like art and culture, faith and reason, um, social justice and inclusivity. If some of those themes are already speaking to you, please let us know which ones those are on the housing application because talking about that with people who are also interested in that and finding new first year students to connect with um, around similar topics is just a great first way to transition well into Villanova. The bonus parts of that is that the same people that you would be taking this once a week, one hour um, class with is you would be in an ACS course with those exact same people. ACS is Augustine and Culture Seminar. It's something every single new student takes. It's two semesters worth, and every single new student will be enrolled in it in the fall and the spring. Um, the difference is in Communitas, the same people that you're taking this theme section that you wanna learn more about um, are also taking the ACS course with you. And each section is 16. It's capped at about 16. So it's a small seminar section. It's meant to build relationships. It's meant to have a positive uh, connection for the first year students and to really build that community. The other thing, the third part that is the blue, um, purplish blue uh, circle is housing. So we also have all of our students in Communitas living under the same roof. So that's how um, it can be very easy to pair a roommate in one theme with another theme. Um, so you don't have to all be in the same theme to live in one section. So all a third of the class will live in Stanford Hall, which is on South Campus. It's a, a slightly larger building at Villanova. It has five floors. That's probably the largest one we have. Um, so a lot of our residence halls are a little smaller and Stanford um, just has the opportunity to house um, the students that are in Communitas all together. So it is a helpful aspect to our program. So um, on South Campus, they would live there together, take this one credit theme in the residence hall in one of the lounges, so very convenient to wear your slippers uh, to class. And then they would also be taking the ACS course together. The instructor in the one credit theme section is someone like me in student life, um, someone who's interested in the topic that is being presented 
um, often a staff member here at the university. The ACS course is taught by uh, our faculty in the ACS uh, program, as we mentioned, very large program for every single new student that comes in the door. So there are many, many professors, but we handpick the ones that are connected to the theme and build that relationship so that my, the ACS professor that I worked with when she had our students over for dinner or for brunch at her house nearby, myself and my two student facilitators were invited to join to again, build that community. The um, I didn't the one credit theme section has an instructor like myself and one to two upper class student facilitators were also interested in that topic. But really just the the golden piece of that is that they are there in the class every week, forming the class, shaping what we're going to be talking about that week, but also being a resource for the new students. So as they come in, it's just so helpful to continually have someone. Um, they always have their OC, they always have their RA, but it's someone that they're literally going to see every Wednesday at 320. So if they have a question, they know exactly where to go and how to connect with us. So it's a great opportunity for, for that perspective. And that is a little bit about Communitas um, and how it works. I, I talked a little bit about the themes. The themes for the upcoming year are here, um, art and culture, Caritas, which is our service learning community. They commit to an hour of reflection as part of their one credit themed, but a themed core section, but also do um, a three hour service commitment a week. So that is additional for Caritas. That's the only one that has that additional component of service learning. Um, we have creative writing, environmental leadership, faith and reason, global perspectives, healthy living, leadership, science inquiry and self, and social justice and inclusivity. So those 10 themes really round out the experience. So in that one hall on South Campus, we have a variety of themes that are all together. And this allows, again, for that roommate pairing, whether it's um, you have someone who's preferred or you have a random roommate that is given to you, it's something that is part of this uh, cycle as well. You can see here in the pictures, some of these are the outings that we've had um, and, and the students have taken um, together as a group. Uh, the one on the right side is uh, has the picture of Stanford in the background, in case that is helpful. But part of Communitas, um, and there, there's a, a few things that have been helpful to shape Communitas. There's specific um, programs that we do just for those students, just for that residence hall. Um, we want to select a strong uh, residence life staff. Some of them have been in Communitas themselves, so they know what the students are studying and how it's working. Um, they also are, some of them are student facilitators as well. So it's been a really, really nice connection to have so many people involved in the process and in its success um, that that has been so, so helpful. The um, way to apply for Communitas is again through that housing application. So that will be a question. Um, are you interested in Communitas? You would click that box and then you would get all of these themes and we ask you to select two. We'll use all of that information that you give us, the theme as well as your housing application to make the best decision um, that would work. And we, we try really hard to make it work for everyone. I will say that there are, are some um, sections that something in leadership, we have many sections of and can find one that fits in everybody's section. Um, some other sections uh, might conflict with if someone has a lot of lab sciences or um, the service learning component might be more difficult. Sometimes those schedule pieces are what trip us up. So we will reach out to you if we have a conflict and wanna share with you. But we also work very closely. I meet with our registrar once a week during the summer to make sure that we're finding the spaces for the students that have requested things. So there's a lot of work that goes into it over the summer and it's the first step is for you to tell us that what you're interested in and we will take it from there. So a little bit about um, why people have chosen Communitas um, in the past. Uh, it has been just a helpful way for students to connect with different aspects of the university. Um, it's someone, like I said, like me, that they're meeting with weekly where they can ask a question about residence life. They can ask a question about our learning support services. Our instructors know a little bit about everything. So they're a first step. They may not know every detail of everything, every hour that learning support is open, but they can point the student in the right direction. We often have group projects where students are out on the university's campus, finding out information and then sharing it with their peers. Cause we find that that's more helpful is for them to find out the information they wanna hear and then share it with their peers. 
Um, but it really is just a great continuation of orientation. Um, there's a lot of connection, a lot of that community that we talk a lot about at Villanova is truly lived through Communitas. That's why we picked that name. But it's, a, a, again, assisting with that transition can't be uh, undervalued. It is something that is helpful uh, as a component. It lasts from that first semester and halfway through the second semester. So we just ended Communitas right before spring break. So other than Caritas, which makes a service commitment throughout the year, um, it is something where it ends before spring break but also is it's so helpful to have that aspect of um, a, another touch point when you come back from winter break. First semester is different than any other semester that you will have on campus just because a lot of things are, are still brand new. And although you're comfortable when you come back from winter break, there's still a few things that we wanna check in with you about. We wanna make sure that when you go through the housing lottery for the first time yourself as a rising sophomore, hard to believe, um, that you have the information you need, that when you go through another another academic course selection, that you know, you know, what is expected of you now that you've declared your major, if that's the case. So we are there to walk with you and give you, you know, a lot of great information and updates. And we do special programs. So as I mentioned, um, just for Communitas, we're taking a bus trip uh, in early April down to D.C., um, to visit some of the Smithsonian Museums and have the day down there. And we often go to New York as well and have um, a little excursion there. But each theme uh, also connects with it. So for example, our art and culture communitas uh, will be always visits a, a local theater as well as our own performing arts center on campus to see the different plays, to see different art and really communicate with each other about what they're seeing and, and how they're describing it. Um, but then also, you know, so on campus, off campus, um, we have wonderful mural arts here in Philadelphia and outdoor art. And that is something that they, we have taken a trip on with other themes, not just art and culture. So, so there's a lot of components that can kind of cross over. So sometimes more than one theme will, will pair up. Um, we're also able for things like the environmental leadership theme, they have taken um, a tour of some, uh, I believe the Tesla factory to see, you know, nearby to see what is, what, what are they, what's the next thing that they're coming up with that will be environmentally savvy? What um, is something that at a sustainable farm where, what can we bring to campus, for example, to our garden? Um, but they go to a farm that, you know, grows produce and then the entrepreneurial side of selling that. So there's a different crossover between each theme, but the themes have unique components as well as overall community tasks for something like big, like the bus trip. Um, we also went to Longwood Gardens, which nearby in Philadelphia has a wonderful winter show that they put on with um, millions of, of lights and they always have a theme and it's a great experience uh, for our students to kind of get in that spirit. So not always uh, just solely an academic trip, sometimes just, uh, just a trip for fun for our community task folks. So as we, um, you know, continue our, our conversation about um, Communitas and the first year experience and, and some of those um, common questions that you've submitted, um, I would love to now turn it over to um, our panelists. So you've provided some questions and we will field uh, what we can. So I would invite our panelists to jump onto the screen and um, we can, you know, I will field you some of the questions that have come in already early, and then we can we can see where we are. So uh, I'll ask you all to introduce yourself, um, your name, hometown, major, um, if you were in a learning community and if you were in Communitas, you know, which theme, and maybe why you chose Villanova in the first place for some of you a year or two ago. We'll start with uh, Lila. Hi, everyone. My name is Lila Gabriel. I'm a junior political science major from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers, um, and I was in the Global Perspectives Communitas, um, and I chose Nova because um, when I took a tour here, I was really nervous, especially during the COVID era, um, and I didn't know where I could really get in, um, but when I took a tour here, I really just like felt at home. I connected with my tour guides. Um, they made me realize that the academics that I was looking for was here, as well as the sports culture and the involvement culture. Um, which I really invested into. So um, it kind of was an all-encompassing place for me that has turned out to be a home for me. 
I can step in next. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Austin Canyu. I'm a sophomore biology major from Streamwood, Illinois. Um, I was involved in the Healthy Living Communitas. And the biggest reason why I chose to go to Villanova was because of the community. Um, people from the faculty and staff members to the other students and, you know, even like the dining hall workers, like, you know, everyone's wearing Nova gear. Everyone like just really cares about all the other students and everyone involved in the community. And that was something that I hadn't really found anywhere else. And I felt was very unique and special to Villanova, which really drew me to make my decision to come here. Hi everyone, my name is Emma Holosek. I'm a sophomore comprehensive science major from Annapolis, Maryland. I was in the leadership communitas my freshman year. And I chose Villanova because at first I was keeping my options open, but as soon as I toured here, I also really connected with my tour guides. I loved the idea of having a campus that was so centered around community and involvement. And I knew that I wanted to be surrounded by people who were also interested in that and excited to get involved and to work together and be a part of something all together as one. And so as soon as I came here, I knew it was going to be Villanova for me. Great, thanks so much, everyone. It sounds like you already answered our first question, which was, what is your favorite thing about Villanova? So I will move on um, to maybe, what was the biggest adjustment coming from a high school experience into Villanova? I can address this first. Um, so, for me personally, the biggest thing was, you know, in high school, I always kind of had other people around me to kind of guide me for what I should be doing, like in terms of, you know, schoolwork or extracurriculars or, you know, just social life. Like I always kind of had someone there to, you know, whether that was my parents or, you know, other like support systems. And the biggest thing was transitioning to college where it's more independent and kind of, you know, you have to make those decisions for yourself. And the biggest thing that helped with me for that was really finding the different ways and like practices that worked for me specifically, you know, when it came to studying, um, finding, you know, just simple things like where to study on campus or what methods work for me, or, you know, also figuring out, you know, how I preferred to act socially, whether that was, you know, if I wanted to spend all my time with my friends or if I needed alone time, I think the biggest thing is really adjusting and figuring out what works for you and then just completely running with that. Yeah, and adding on to that, I came from a very small school, high school. My graduating class was 97 and it was about the same group since kindergarten. And so coming to Villanova, it was a much bigger community. And so it was a little bit of an adjustment trying to find ways to make the community a little smaller and get to know people and find ways to see the same consistent faces. But for me, getting involved in clubs was super helpful. And that's something that is just incredible at Villanova. There's a lot of different opportunities and a lot of people who are excited to get you to join them and show you what they're a part of. And also Communitas. I met a bunch of my closest friends still um, through that. And so I think just finding ways to really find my place, but there were lots of ways to do that. And I think just to reiterate what uh, these two have said, I think the biggest adjustment for me was definitely scheduling and like following a schedule and determining how to make my own schedule as Austin touched on. Um, it's definitely an adjustment. Um, you go from high school where it's very structured, at least for me, um, and coming here, I got to kind of do it my own way. And so kind of falling into that pattern um, was definitely an adjustment, but definitely for the best. Um, I think it's definitely takes some time, but getting involved, like Emma said, and meeting people and like finding ways to fill up your schedule, but not too much and keeping time for yourself uh, can be really helpful. And just kind of finding that routine for yourself every semester as it changes um, was definitely super helpful in that adjustment. Great. Uh, we do have a couple of questions about Communitas. So we will, we will shift into that world. Um, just I'll answer a few live. Um, each it, does each theme at Communitas live with just the people in their theme? The answer is no. They can live with you know different people beyond the theme, their own theme. So um, multiple themes can can live together, um, which is great because it really opens up that pool that I was talking about. To if you wanted to select a roommate, um, and also could varsity athletes do Communitas? Yes, they can. Um, their schedule, fall athletes have a tight schedule. And so we work with um, the people in the academic advising with our fall, with our varsity athletes to see if what is a possibility. But we also started running a spring section of Communitas that is just for student athletes that could not participate in the fall. So that has been something we've been looking into. So 
if you're a fall varsity, if you're a varsity athlete and it's fall, it might be tough to fit it in your schedule, but we're going to give it a shot. Um, but then also, we also give it a different opportunity in the spring that has similar, um, it's, it's usually the theme of leadership, but in a spring section and they meet in kind of a truncated way um, to cover some of those same topics. So that is definitely an option as well. And then um, there's just a question about size. Uh, the community class, each class is 16 people. That's each section. So for something like art and culture that has two or three sections or healthy living has four or five sections, that's 16 people, 16 students per section. So there is a limit on how much we can accommodate, especially in the building as well as in the classroom size, but we are open to adding more sections based on interest. Um, so a couple of years ago, we had two healthy livings um, and the interest was so strong that we now have four. So we've we've kind of been seeing an upward trend there. Um, so we're happy to respond to the students' uh, interest there. So for our panelists, um, maybe what was the biggest benefit or the, the, the best takeaway from the community house experience specifically? I can take this to start. Um, I think for me, it was definitely hard to meet people in the beginning, um, but having Communitas and having that, that constant uh, faces around you and the same people um, really like helped to see a familiar face on campus. You can walk around and you can say hello. And just knowing that you have people for almost the full year, especially in your ancients and your moderns classes, um, you kind of do a lot of things with them and spend a lot of hours a week with them. So you kind of bond um, immediately, which is really nice to have those familiar faces and initial bonds right off the bat uh, when you first come to school. Um, also as well, I'm not sure. I think this was for every section, but at least for healthy living, um, specifically like the student facilitator was very helpful kind of having that connection. You have your OC, um, but also just having, like, uh, Alicia said, uh, someone that you meet every single week, um, that can kind of, uh, help you along the way. So like the thing that comes to mind was when it came to, um, like class registration, our student facilitator actually sat down with us and showed us how she went through and uh, registered for classes. Housing registration was the same thing. So it was really like little things like that that you might not really think about at the start um, and kind of guiding you along those and having another resource to really help you out on that avenue. Yeah, I would just have to agree and say that's the people. Um, my facilitator, we had a very similar experience and still after that became really good friends. And I met a lot of my closest friends because we lived on the same hall, because we were in the same communitas or we were in the same class. And so we met three times a week. And even now that we're not in that class together, I'll see people around campus. And even if we haven't stopped and talked since then, we always say hi to each other. There's always somebody who's there to help. And even now we had someone reach out in our group chat and ask a question about a professor. So just always having those people to lean back on and people who you really get to know and really make you feel like you're at home. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, in just another, a few other questions came through about Communitas. Um, it, let's see here. Uh, it is only available that this first year. Um, you can you participate in your first year at Villanova. Um, there is a sophomore service learning community, but um, we we're the first year learning community, and this is only offered during that first year. Um, as far as the housing system, a bit a little bit about the lottery. Um, that you would apply for community tasks um, in the housing application. And the, once things are, are completed, the housing team, our operations team will look at the date that you completed that housing application. So when it opens, I would suggest you carve out some time to go in there and intentionally think about your answers um, and making sure that um, you get that done as, as quickly as possible, especially if you're interested in community tasks you will kind of be able to have that component. Um, and again, they'll start by that date of completion. So if you're an ED1 student and you wait until late and you wait until late May, then that will be the date that we have. So, you know, it's been open for uh, since April for you. So wanting to make sure that you, it's a busy time in your life as a senior in high school. There's a lot of things going on, um, but, you know, just carve out some time and make sure that you're checking those components. Um, and again, uh, two themes can live together. Um, we have a lot of questions about residence life in general. So um, could any of you share 
Um, maybe if you had an intentionally placed roommate, someone you selected, or did you go random and, um, you know, or, or what your experience was like in that hall of, of students? I can start with this one. So I, for me, I wasn't sure which way I wanted to go, but I ended up going random. And for me, it worked out really well. My roommate and I became really good friends because we were two people who were in completely different schools. She's business. I was liberal arts. And we were very different extracurriculars, but we lived so well together and really got to know each other. And so really made that space kind of our home together. That was always good to go back to. And so for me, I really think if you just go with your gut, it kind of, it'll work out. Um, and it was also really nice because when you fill out, you get to fill out your preferences and then everyone on your hall is going to be a little bit different from you personality wise, but you live so well together. And so it's just nice to always know that when, you know, you go brush your teeth in the morning, there are people to talk to. And I had a great experience. I, uh, also went random like Emma did. Um, and I, it was a great experience. I mean, it was like kind of fun to meet someone like brand new and you kind of like we talked a little bit before we came uh when we got put together um but we came kind of from like similar households and we lived together great um we chose not to live together for the next coming years but that was completely fine it was like we're still friends to this day um so that was a good experience just to kind of like throw yourself in and meet someone and make a friend out of it um and it's fun especially at the beginning of school you and your roommate are like the two people that you have in the same room so you kind of do a lot together um and make friends that way so I would definitely recommend the random path I also went random so <laughs> not a great sample size um <laughs> but I went random and my roommate I found out one of the first things about him was that he was an ROTC which really scared me um because I was convinced that I was going to be getting woken up at 6 a.m. every day, um, which luckily did not end up being the case. Um, but also kind of different. We were very friendly, but we weren't, I wouldn't say we were really friends. We're not living together this year. Um, we lived great together. We never like had any, you know, arguments or anything like that. We kind of just did our own thing, which is also another like w great way to handle things. Like I think you don't need to be best friends with your roommate and that's okay. Um, you know, it's just, you're living together and that's all it has to be if that's what you want it to be um so he was a great roommate i'm glad i lived with him um but yeah great thanks so much I didn't realize you all had gone the random route but i'm glad i i mentioned it um we have gotten a lot of questions about greek life in general so just a quick touch touching on that um here at villanova about a third of our students are involved in Greek life. So it is um, not necessarily overwhelming. We don't have houses where students live together uh, or a Greek row or, or anything like that. Um, but it is part, definitely a student organization that, that our students are connected with in a variety of ways. Um, the first year students are not uh, able to um, be a part of the recruitment process and join the Greek life process until the spring semester. You will get information in the fall semester. There's a few info sessions. Um, the women are, are start in the beginning of January, and I believe the men are more towards the middle of spring semester or later in February. Um, so you get information about it in the fall semester and, and indicate that you're interested. But uh, my understanding is that it is something that is a heavy, more of a heavy spring commitment. Um, so I will let, I think our I think Lila and Emma are involved in the in Greek life, so I will let them talk a little bit about their experience, but it is something that is not that uh, first semester the way other schools may be, um, uh, may, may be organized, but we are a spring semester recruitment aspect. So if you ladies want to talk a little bit about your experience um, in Greek life and, and or why you chose to to join. Okay, I can start. Um, so I chose to join Greek Life because I think it just why it completely like widened um the group of people that I got to know and become friends with, and make connections with. Um, I was involved in other organizations. Um, and I met people through that, but I felt like for me, like a part of it was missing, and um, it's just a great way to make 
more friends, new friends, more friendly faces. Um, and it gives you something to do. You can get super involved um, within sororities in Greek life, especially through uh, philanthropic events. Um, and so like mine, for example, has a philanthropy event this Friday where the whole chapter comes together. We raise money for our philanthropy. Um, it's really amazing. And it's amazing uh, what we give back to the community um, and just kind of creating those bonds like um, off the bat with people that are similar to you because when you go through the recruitment process, you're finding the place that you're supposed to be and you're finding a place will, where you'll fit in with the girls that you're joining. So um, it's kind of nice to be in an entire organization of girls that have similar values and things that you believe in in your own life and your moral path. So that's kind of been a great benefit to me and my experience at Villanova. Yeah, I would say that my experience has been pretty similar. I actually was a little bit hesitant going into it. I wasn't sure if Greek life was for me, but I thought I'll go ahead, try it out. You know, worst case, I I end up not being a part of it. But I, like Lila said, it's been amazing getting to meet girls who have very similar values to me and to have a space to go to once a week where I feel like everybody's really excited to see me. We all get together. We have a purpose that's a little bit greater and involved in the community, which is a lot of fun. And it's been a really nice way to, like I said, make the community smaller and know that if I go somewhere, there's likely, you know, if I'm in a class or a club, I'll likely find another girl who's in the same organization as me. And it's just been a wonderful way also, like Lila said, to meet people and to, again, have another place that's a little bit of home at Villanova. Thanks so much. Um... Uh, May this another question about we have a few questions about getting involved in general, you know, in in things, um, not any one specific club, but just, you know, getting involved on campus, finding your place here, finding the organizations you wanted to be a part of. Um, talk a little bit about how you found your community here at Villanova outside of the classroom um, and, you know, feel free to, you know, share you know, if it was a, a specific group or or organization, feel free to share a little bit about it since they might not our participants may not know all of our acronyms. I can go ahead. Um, so I would say the biggest organization that I'm probably involved in is the orientation program. Um, shout out. Uh, but um, I got involved there. It was kind of a... Because it, it the the involvement or I guess I should say the recruitment process for orientation comes in the the spring semester, uh, which we're actually going through right now. Um, so I did obviously know about it from my own orientation counselor. I had a great experience with orientation, um, and it was really just getting to know a lot of the people on campus. It was more I got involved in other clubs and then kind of came to ask other people about orientation, their own experience, what they loved about it. Um, and I just found that it was an organization with a lot of people in it that really shared the same values and kind of all wanted the same goal of improving the overall new student experience. Um, so I think the biggest thing for me was just finding people that really had the same values and the same end goals as I did. Great, thanks. Um, and kind of going off of that, Austin kind of touched on orientation, but I would also say that that uh, is the largest thing that I'm involved in and has definitely made my experience at Villanova feel like home. Um, but beyond that, getting involved um, can seem daunting for sure. And as a first year, walking through campus and ha having so many opportunities kind of thrown in your face is amazing, but overwhelming. Um, and one of the first things that happens on campus once you start school is the involvement fair, um, which is a great resource. And your orientation counselor will bring your orientation group to that in the first coming weeks of school. And all the clubs, organizations kind of come out and they have a table and you can talk to them about what to get involved in. Um, so that was really great for me. I just walked around and I put my email down for any of the clubs I was interested in. They sent out initial emails, like interest emails. Um, and I got to kind of go from there. Um, I would say there's a definitely an involvement culture here and it definitely has made my experience what it is. Um, and I'm so grateful for it. Um, but if you go out for something that you think that you really will connect to and it's not your time to get into that position or get involved in that organization, there are so many other opportunities. So with how many 
um, opportunities that are to get involved, I would say just keep trying to find that place that will make your experience feel like home. I'll be the third one to say the orientation program, I think was an amazing way to meet students across all years of Villanova and then just get to really, you know, be a part of a certain part of like the welcoming side and then also be welcomed by a bunch of people that you get to know. Um, I also, a one activity has really familiarized me with the campus is Blue Key, which is our volunteer-based tour group at Villanova. So once a week getting to meet prospective families and then also meet other students who are just equally ex as excited to be at Villanova. And then I would also say something that's been really nice is kind of the some of the academic organizations. So I'm on a pre-med track, so I'm in the pre-med club. And that was like the first week that the club met, I immediately met a bunch of students who were in the same classes as me, who I otherwise might not have met because they weren't in the same section. And that was an amazing way to just know you know, who's kind of in the same boat, who, you know, we can meet and get together and study and, you know, talk about things related to our classes. And so that has also been a big, something that I really push for students who are interested. Thanks so much. Um, it's, you don't get, you know, extra points for mentioning the orientation program, but I appreciate that all of you uh, thought that was a good aspect of your experience. Uh, we hope to share that with all of our our attendees. Um, our final question, and this can be, you know, um, you know, more of something that either happened or you wish happened, but what's one piece of advice that you would give to our new students or new families in the audience for that first semester? Um, whether it's something that, you know, you, one of your family members did for you or um, something that you coordinated with communication, just what's a piece of advice that you would give to, to our attendees tonight? Um, I'll start. I would say that my biggest piece of advice is stepping out of your comfort zone and really leaning into that discomfort and trying new things. I think that I wouldn't have found the people that I found at this school and the organizations that I'm involved in if I didn't take a leap once in a while. Um, I was definitely terrified in my first few weeks to put myself in front of people and to step into a vulnerable position or fill out an application. It's the first time that I really had to interview for something. Um, and these are all life skills that I had to learn, but it was definitely scary to first do it. But if I hadn't done it, then I wouldn't be here where I am today, which I'm so grateful for. So my biggest piece of advice is don't shy away from things that you're interested in. Um, really try and pursue it. Um, and that's how I found my place here. Yeah, and something I would add to that is to remember that you know yourself best. So you have to make sure that if there's something that interests you, you know, go for it, try it out. If there's something that's a really big part of your identity at home, find a way to bring it with you or continue that passion here because it's nice to have, you know, appreciate that part of yourself and get to meet people who are really similar. And something that my parents told me going into college was that you have to remember that nothing is embarrassing when you get to college and that you have to feel like if there's something you really want to do, go for it, try it. And just remember that everyone is in the same boat their first semester and remember that you have each other to lean on and to not forget who you are and just to make sure that you're making the most of it. Might be getting some brownie points from the parents here, but um, one thing that I really wish that I did was uh, like kind of relying on support systems back home. Uh, so call your parents. Um, I didn't do it as much as I really wish I did first semester. Because when you get on campus or when you go to college for the first time, it can feel somewhat isolating and lonely and kind of like you're on your own. But really, you know, keeping up with people back home or, you know, just calling your parents or calling your friends back home, you know, asking someone to FaceTime and so they can show you your dog uh, are just great ways to really, you know, kind of ground yourself and stay like focused and, you know, maintain a balance between um like your own support systems for back home while also taking that and taking that kind of confidence that you can get from that and, and that support and bringing it out into college to really, like everyone else was saying, make the most of it and do it confidently. Um, yes, I think uh, you might get points with the parents, but also FaceTiming with the dog is something people actually often request. So you sh if you have a, a family pet, you might be on to prepare them for their own 
Instagram account or something. I feel like people definitely want to know how the dogs are back home. Um, so I want to, we, we tackled some of the questions that have been coming in, um, you know, not furiously, but, you know, I feel like we gave a good amount of time to everything. And I just want to, you know, thank our panelists and, and make sure that, you know, um, that it is something that, you know, your voice and your experiences are so valuable. And, you know, I'm happy to share the information, but I think that your experiences and what you're sharing with us tonight um, and what you share with the new students through your various roles when they come to campus is just so important. So thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, I do want to share that um, our, um, our, uh, the summer communication was a two-way street. This is also a two-way street. So happy to share, um, you know, our, our general information, um, here. Uh, let's see if I can, um, our contact information here, our orientation information, um, our, e our website, our email address, our website, and then, um, our Instagram account. So feel free to follow orientation communitas, feel free to reach out, um, even if you have a question that we didn't get to that's for a different organization or a different branch of Villanova, we're happy to pass that along. We're happy to be the people that that connect you with them. Or if you have a general student question, feel free to, to you know, email it to us. And whether it's Austin, Lila, or Emma, or if you're interested in an experience of someone in a certain major, we have a variety of students that uh, we work with that are just really happy to share their experiences and talk a little more about um, what to expect when you get here on campus. So please feel free to reach out. We we will be sending you so much information, Villanova in general, from your colleges to the orientation program, from our uh, family office. So just wanna make sure that you um, know that we are also here for you, not just putting out information, but we want to hear from you and, and answer your questions and hopefully make it a um, an exciting time for you as a senior, uh, but also a busy time. And so we don't want you to miss any of those deadlines. So we will constantly be in touch and happy to, to answer any questions you might have. Um, so thanks again to our panelists. Thank you for sharing your time, everyone. Um, and I hope that our participants um, have really enjoyed hearing more about Villanova and we look forward to hearing more. Thanks everyone. Have a good night.